Hello friends and welcome to this video. Here I'm doing um, a bit of a book review in a way. I haven't actually read all of this yet, but I wanted to expand your awareness on what's going on that out there in the world in the realm of, of mediumship and physical mediumship and the entities that surround us and guide us, our guides, our non-physical friends. Um, working in uh, spiritual circles now um, with people who have experienced profound messages from spirit in the most bizarre places you would ever uh, find. Now this book that here that I have in my hand is called WhatsApp, WhatsApps from Heaven. And yep, that's exactly what it is. WhatsApp, um, messages from spirit. This is a book by uh, Louise Hamlin. I haven't read all this yet, but I will read a page shortly, which I found interesting. Um, from what I know is that there are, I haven't had it myself, but I've heard a number of um, people in spiritual circles who have received WhatsApp messages, um, not from anybody else, but from random uh, numbers or from groups and giving them messages from beyond the veil. And how is this happening? It is, makes me ask more questions, what's going on out there? That spirit are able to manipulate um, signals to our phones now that they are evolving with us to communicate with us. Um, there are other things such as like uh, spirit telephones where spirit are able to have a conversation with us through uh, technology now which has been really incredible. Um, so yeah, um, so I haven't read all this, it's not a book review but I wanted, to, before I read it, I wanted to give my opinion on what's going on out there and what I've heard because unlike having a book review, this is um, a concept, not concept, this is something that's actually physically happening to a lot of people in uh, spiritual circles where they're receiving messages from people and they haven't sent it because they've, been, they've had to receive this message elsewhere. Um, yeah, I bought this book for my father because he was very interested to hear about WhatsApps and messages from phones from Spirit. And there is another book which I recommend, um, The Skull Experience, the, uh, the Skull Experiment, which was back in the 1990s. Um, and it was four sitters, um, two trans mediums, and two other people, I think it was two, two couples that came together and sat for Spirit for many years in a, in a basement in a place called Skoll, S-C-O-L-E. -E. And it's one of the most scientifically uh, evident-based um, spiritual, uh, scientific evidence phenomena that's been ever recorded. For example, they had um, lockable boxes. Uh, they put a padlock on and inside the box before they locked it up was an empty feel. Empty feel. They had researchers and like um, scientists and stuff present the whole time. They took that film away, it got developed, and there was messages on that film. So it's, you know, spirit are able to manipulate our physical things around us if they want to work with us, and they will make that known. So if once you've opened yourself up to spirit, there's no turning back because they will try and communicate with you. We've had that with in our seance room where we have a like a speaker, like a Bluetooth speaker, and they've like played with it and it's completely turned off or they've drained the battery on like an iPod or an MP3 player and we're not unable to use it and we found out it's because there was some direct um, voice um, phenomena going on in the room um, or other messages that we wanted to, to use they didn't want us to sing hence the the um, hence the, the speaker itself we used the music to raise the energy so I'll read you um, which is about two, two pages here. It's called Sound and Consciousness. This is on page 42 on the book WhatsApps from Heaven by Louise Hamlin. Um, so yeah, I thought I would share this with you. But interesting concept, well, it's not a concept, but something that's actually physically happening to people. Um, so this isn't some messages of, of spirit, but it goes into more science and stuff. So here we go. Sand and Consciousness. That summer of 2019, I took Phoebe for a long walk along the beach, and because it was nearly warm enough, I took off my socks and shoes to feel the damp sand with my feet. I was beginning to feel alive again, but I still needed lots of physical sensations to remind me that I was on this earth and part of this world. In, 20, in 2002, 
My then partner, Rob, had died of stomach cancer at the early age of 57. I had nursed him for the six months that he was ill and he died at home in my arms. I was totally bereft, especially as my father had died just 12 days before. Oh, poor her. I remember that after the funeral, some dear friends took me up to the northwest corner of Scotland and we spent two weeks walking in the wild, unspoilt landscape there. I used to strip off and jump naked into every, every tarn that we passed. Even though it was September, the water was always icy cold and it would send shock waves through my whole system. And I, would, and I could not stop myself screaming when I first went in, but I needed to feel a physical sensation. I needed to know that I was still a body and not just an amorphous blob without boundaries that I seemed to have become in my grief. So basically, I guess she wanted to feel something and rather than all this pain. This time around, I did not go to Scotland, but cold, wet sand on my feet was helpful and again let me feel a physical bound boundary to my body. Of course, after the barefoot walk, I then had huge difficulty in wiping my feet clean before putting my socks back on and the remaining gritty sand was quite uncomfortable. When I got home, I was pleased to be able to wash my feet and put on a new sandless socks. It made me think about sand. A grain of sand is special. William Blake thought that heaven, heaven was a grain of sand and maybe he was right. I see a grain of sand as a fulcrum, a pivot, a pivot on which balances the universe. It is said that there are more the stars in the sky than there are grains of sand upon earth. And yet the equally astonishing, there are also more atoms in a single grain of sand than there are grains of sand in this world. Although this might not be totally and utterly accurate, it is a sufficiently close bullmark to make sense. This knowledge makes me realize how incredibly huge and how incredibly tiny our surroundings and our extraordinary and how extraordinary complex. I wish I knew more about science and understood what little I know. At school I found physics boring, just seemed to draw levers and write up predictable experiments which always neatly ended with QED. And as, as for chemistry, I'm sorry to say that I used to sit at the back and do my Latin homework. I ploughed through maths, but the numbers did not come alive for me and I found it dry stuff. I was interested in people, in their lives, their stories, their languages. I loved history, geography, English, Latin, humanities, generally. Science left me cold. It was only after Patrick died that I wanted to understand life, science, consciousness and the universe. To start with, I read books about the afterlife to see if it was real or not. But after 6th of August 2019, I knew for sure that consciousness survived and that I wanted to read about how that could possibly be. I started to read popular books on physics and then quantum mechanics and I became fascinated and confused in quantum measure. So yeah, she goes on to talk about quantum effects, the mystery of consciousness, time and memory. Um, I want to read this, but I wanted to talk to you guys about, you know, what's going on in the world with with our technology and how spirit are using our technology to now communicate with us and it's all really possible. So I will read this soon and I'll do a book review, but I wanted to tell you guys about what's going on out, out there. So if you're receiving really weird messages, not just from spirit in your mind, in your head, um, but if you are actually getting some physical evidence, feathers in the room, um, you're always seeing numbers, synchronicity. It's because spirit, they want, they want to get you awake. They want you to be aware of what's going on around you. And the correlation between dreams and mediumship is that it's be being conscious in the dream state. It's about being aware of your dreams because your dreams, I know for sure that dreams are accumulation of your day-to-day -day subconscious stuff that has been needs to be filtered through otherwise if you remember everything from out all your days for the past years and you, you're going to have problems so we we filter out we cleanse our mind and but through those messages becomes very powerful experiences that we have through our guides for our non-physical friends um spirit helpers our, our spirit team that want to communicate with us and they will they will give us signs and symbols but we have to be the ones wanting that to happen and if we aren't listening we aren't receiving those guidance or we are also working actively with spirit very consciously and strongly 
proactively doing the work with them, then they will work with us profoundly. Because we are doing workshops here in the physical world, they're doing workshops there in the astral realms, in the dream worlds, in the, in the non-physical worlds. And then there's that bridge of consciousness, consciousness, a bridge of energy between where we are communicating, and that's where we meet. And also between those, those medium realms is also the dream state where we have aspects where we can communicate and connect with people too. So keep believing, keep experiencing, because out there is a world beyond the physical that spirit is communicating with us daily, throughout the night. And it's important for us to be very aware of what's going on out there to receive messages. And if we don't receive it through our dreams, then we receive it through our phones or something might happen to our computers. It's not broken, probably just you're getting some some form of communication. There was an Italian uh, or Spanish, I think it was Italian guy who had this uh, radio and he used white noise to, to receive um, physical, very physical sounds of spirit communicating with us. How they do that, how spirit are doing this, I have no idea about the science of it. Maybe it might be explained in this book, WhatsApps um, from Heaven. <laughs> I do want to read this, but I had it with my pile of other books um, I wanted to, to review about. So, um, yeah, I really hope that uh, you've enjoyed this uh, this video. Listen to it, um, had an understanding. And if it doesn't resonate with you, that's completely fine. But if it has, give me a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment below if you've had any spirit interactions from your guides, from spirit helpers, from your spirit team, um, or, the, or your beloved soul, galactic beings, whoever's out there non-physically that's working with you. Uh, feel free to communicate and get in touch. Anyway, for now, I'll speak to you soon. Have a great rest of your day, whatever time it is in your current reality, and I'll speak to you soon.